Creating Arrays. Let's learn how to create arrays. You can open up the same design too by going to Open and then opening the Array Options in Chapter 5 of your project files. I'll go ahead and cancel this because I already have it open. The first array we'll play with is with this shape here. You can go ahead and find the Array option in the Modify panel under the Home tab. Go ahead and pull out this menu and make sure you have Rectangular Array selected. I'll go ahead and select that and AutoCAD now asks us to select the objects. I'll go ahead and select this rectangle here. Once I do so, I'll go ahead and press enter. And now as you can see, I have an array of objects in two directions, along the X and along the Y. I'll go ahead and zoom out a bit, pan down so you can see everything in view. Now let's see what happens when I change this to one. I'll go ahead and put one in tab, and now you can see I've changed the number of rows within my array. Well, I want to stretch this out a bit. I have these columns here and these grips to use, as well as this one here. I can go ahead and enter another number like 9 and tab. And you can see I'm continuing to add more objects. Let's see what happens if I select this grip, pull it out. I can continue to make more array options. If I select there, the number 23 got changed. Let's see what happens if I select this one. I can go pull it out, pull it in, and now I'm changing the spacing between the objects. Let's go ahead and exaggerate this. And as you can see, it changed the between and the total. I'll go ahead and click this handle, bring it back in a bit, click there, and I'll go ahead and click this handle too, and bring it into about here. I'll maybe extend it one more, put it there, and now we have some other options here too. So again, this is a rectangular array. We can change the columns, the rows, the space between, and the total number. In this section here, we could change levels if we were going in a different axis. But we're not going to worry about that right now. We also have other properties here. Associative means if it's clicked on like that or off like that. And what it means is this object here, if it's an associative, it will be one complete object. If it's not, then this will be broken into individual objects. For now, we'll keep it associative. I'll go ahead and select close and finish out the array select it and there there's my array and I'm back in my options I'm gonna go ahead and close it again let's try and work with this array a little bit and try and line up to these two rectangles you can do this by selecting move select your array once you're done making your selection you can go ahead and right click to accept it press space or the enter bar I'll go ahead and pick it up from this point here and then I'll move it to this point here and there you go now what I want to do is actually center it between these two rectangles now how do I do that I can go ahead and pan over just a little bit zoom in and now I'm going to go ahead and move it again I'll specify the object and then I'll go ahead and press enter to accept those objects I'll pick a base point here and then now I need to specify another point to actually move it to I'll go ahead and right click and that's not exactly what I want it to do so I'll go ahead and zoom out and you can see my object came over here I can simply go ahead and undo that and undo again and there's my object so let's try moving it one more time activate move select the object press enter specify the base point which is this perpendicular intersection and now I want to move it between these points now what I was looking for was a menu. You can find this by shift right clicking. And the menu that I want is mid between two points or the menu option. I'll go ahead and select that. Now the first point that I want is this point. The second point is this point over here. And there you go. If I zoom out, pan over a little bit, I've centered this array right between these two lines. I can still go ahead and select the array make more adjustments by stretching it this way or that I can go ahead and adjust the spacing by selecting this handle here go ahead and press enter to accept escape to deselect that object 
and I can go ahead and recenter and adjust it as needed. Okay, that was the array tool and rectangular. Let's look at polar array. But before we do that, I'll select it, pan over to the right, and here's our next object. I'll zoom in just a little bit, put it in the center, and now let's see what we can do. I've already activated the polar array command, as you can see here in the command line, so all I need to do is select the objects. I'll go ahead and select this object here, and once I'm done, I'll press enter, and now I need to specify the center point of an array, or base point, and axis of rotation. What I want to do is simply specify the center point, and I need the center point of this circle here. So I'll click there, and as you can see, I've made a polar array. And we get the same type of options that we had in the rectangular way. We can make this associative, as well as adjusting the base point. We could change the direction. All you can see with this so far is that my handle changes here. I can drag this around back and forth to adjust the spacing like I did before. I can increase the number of items. I can make this 10, for example. Press tab. It increases it more. I can increase the number of rows. Let me zoom out a bit before I do that. I'll go ahead and put it at two and hit tab. And as you can see, I added a number row. I can go ahead and put this at one, press tab, and I brought it just a little bit closer. We can put this at maybe five, put tab. And as you can see, I can keep expanding the rows, changing the spacing to fit the shape that I want. I'll go ahead and make this unassociative this time and once I'm done I'll click close and now I'll try and select this object here and as you can see as I continue to select objects each one is individual object separate from all the rest I'll pan over to the left just to select this object here and this was an associative object so each of these rectangles is grouped as one object I'll come over pan back to the right again I'll hit escape and there you go. Now the last option that we have to choose is the path array. I'll go ahead and select that. Use my middle mouse button to pan over to the side a bit. And we have this object here and this spline that's going around in a curve. I'll zoom out just so you can see the whole thing. Center it. And again, we have to select the objects. I'll select this shape here. Press enter. Now I have to select the path curve. I'll go ahead and select this. And there you go. My object has, have, has been arrayed across this line. Again, I have all the same adjustments as I had before. I can make it associative. I can change the levels. I can change the rows, number of items, the spacing between them, and everything else in between. I'll go ahead and close that there. So we just learned how to do an array in three different ways. We learned the rectangular method, the polar method, and along a path, and how to make adjustments to arrays according to our design needs. Go ahead and explore the array a little bit more yourself and see what you can do.